Well, you're listening to Hanneman Radio. This is the Hanneman Talk Show with your hosts, Mark Lindquist and... Arch De Leon from Hanuman Center. And we are live here at FCC Free Radio in San Francisco. This show is sponsored by Hanneman Center of San Francisco. You can find us at Hanneman Center, H-A-N-U-M-A-N-C-E-N-T-E-R dot com. And find out all the classes and the seminars going on at the center, as well as friending us on Facebook and follow our vibrant community. So, Arch, how's it going, man? Yeah, things are well, you know, and I think uh, I always say that if you become the host of the source, everything will be given to you, you know. And I think I was discussing this a little bit on our way here with Rome. You know, how do you project what you feel and hear, you know, so clearly and project that into this world? And uh, I'm very impressed on his ability to do that very well. So anyway, so this is very interesting because uh, today we have a special guest. That's right. Mr. Romel is in the house. Say hello, my friend. Hello. How are you? (laughs) We're good. So why don't you give us a a taste of who you are and kind of just, you know, how you got here in the first place. Well, it's an interesting story. I've been on this path, I think, all my life. And by the way, I think my meeting Arch was like more kind of a divine intervention because the minute he walked in the room, I recognized him and looked at him and says, I know this guy spiritually I know him and I do that a lot with certain people when when I feel I just know them I know I haven't met him before but I also look at him from a different perspective and say I just know him now my spiritual journey has been a very very unique one Um, beginning with the fact that I'm one of seven children uh, I was raised by a very unique and rare mother who passed away when I was uh, when she was 36 years 36 years old. I'm from the Midwest, right outside Chicago, in a little place called East Chicago, Indiana. Hmm. And when I say it, people think that it's in Chicago. No, it's a, it's outside of Chicago because it's about maybe 40 miles away from Chicago. But um, this place was very powerful and very intense and very special. Um, There were people like um, Stevie Wonder, who's a lot of his, you know, cousins lived in my neighborhood, and I used to play with them, and they're related to my first cousins. Um, It was a place that I first met Michael Jackson and his brothers because a lot of people don't know that his dad lived in that neighborhood, too. Mm. And he was, you know, a very old acquaintance of my father, who's now passed away. And so the whole adventure of the arts and music sort of sent me on a spiritual journey that caused me to question just about everything that was going on around me, especially after the uh, passing of my mother, because that was so traumatic for me that even at the funeral, I can remember not getting out of the hearse, I mean, out of the limousine, when they took the body to bury it and put it in the ground and everything, because something would not allow me to accept the fact that that's it that you just, you know, you die, they put you in a box, and then they bury you in the ground. I wouldn't accept it. And no one noticed that I did not get out of, you know, the the limousine. Uh, I'm one of, as I was saying earlier, one of seven children, but, you know, the whole family, relatives or whatever, they were around the grave and all this. And I remember sitting in there realizing that this is not the end. Everybody wants to tell me you've gone on, that, that my mother had gone on to heaven, she's in a better place. And I had such a spiritual bond with her, not as though I recognized it as that at the time, but I had such a spiritual bond with her that I would sit in there and I remember saying to myself, I will find you. If you're in heaven, I know I'm here on earth, but I'm going to find where heaven is and I will find you because I know you wouldn't just abandon me. She was my mentor. She started me in the arts when I was very, very young. I'm, I was performing in nightclubs and things when I was like 11. And she taught me things about dance. She taught me things about the fine arts. So I was drawing and I was very advanced, you know, in my drawing and singing and dance and just, and she even wanted me to be a public speaker. I remember when I was very little 
she um, wanted my older brother to say a speech at the PTA meeting, and he was so freaked out by it, and he was so shy that she says, well, I'll give it to your little brother, and he'll do it. And I just lit up, and naturally, it was a natural for me. So all my life, I've been on this quest to know some of the most wonderful things I think a person would want to know, but it all began by asking questions. And by the time I went through the whole university system and experimenting with different kinds of religions, I must have been through all of them. I mean, I hung out with, you know, Muslims and the Muslim uh, friends and Buddhist friends and, you know, born-again Christian friends and, you know, looking for what was this big answer. There was something in me that always believed in the power of goodness. I remember I was walking alone, having one of those heart-to-heart -heart talks with the universe or God or whatever, and I was so confused about religion on this planet. It had become so abstract that I remember being so emotionally overwrought and just stressed out that I started crying and everything, and I was on this football field in the park. And I just remember talking to God saying, I'm done. I can't handle this anymore. I don't want any more of this religion stuff. It's too confusing. Everybody's arguing with everybody. Everybody's fighting, you know, saying, I'm right. This is right. Go this way. Go that way. You won't get into heaven if you do this. And I'm still remembering in the back of my mind what I told my mother. I'm going to find you. If you're in heaven, I'm going to find heaven. And I remember making this strange request to say, okay, God, here's the deal. I want to know you even if it kills me. A lot of people were terrified of knowing God. They said, oh, you can't meet God. If you meet God, the minute you meet him, you'll die. And so it made people afraid of God. And they said, that's healthy to have a, the fear of God in your heart. Well, I didn't want to be afraid of God, you know. And I figured that was the last safe place. And I said, even if it kills me, I don't want any books. I don't want any dogma. I just want you. I want to meet you. And my life mysteriously started to change. People started showing up over the next couple of years, and things began to really, really evolve. I want to get into that space with you. Yes. I want to go deep a little, you know, because I want to bring this, this energy behind you a little closer to us. Can you handle it? Are you sure you're ready for that? Because <laughs> <laughs> I can go... Very deep and spiritual deep sea diving. That's my thing. <laughs> yeah, and I think one of the questions that's showing up to me is, I, 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 am, I have your pictures, your paintings in my hands. Yes. If this comes through you, okay, if this kind of clarity comes through you, if this can show up through your hands, something deep like this, okay, this is an expression of heaven. I call them a piece of real. It's like a, a divine flower showing up through your hands in uh, detail. Thank you. You know, tell us a little bit about this. And because this is, this is divine, you know, this is divine that's coming through you. You know, what, what, how do you connect to this? And, 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 and tell us a little bit about play by play experiencing deeply in different channels intuition creativity spirituality your beingness how is this experience when you s when this is happening it's like creating birth to something miraculously you know like well you're asking what is my process right my spiritual process to create this it first artistically my my art was born out of a deep deep desire to be excellent because growing up in the kind of situation I, that I grew up in it was like the kiss of death to be mediocre in a world that may not accept me just for being who I was and you know just being a person on the earth and what I did was I got into it because I deeply wanted to show that there was something excellent in me and I knew I had to cultivate it because I saw what excellence can do for you and how it could help you make your way in the world so going through college and everything that was my drive and my standard to be 
excellent and to keep driving to say it can be better, it can be better, it can be better. But later on, when you talk about what is my process and why are they spiritual, I read something that just blew my mind when I first came to San Francisco. And it talked about the difference between art and true art. And I said, oh, there's a difference. Mm. And the thing that resonated with me is when I read that true art was the revealing of the nature and character of God within. And I knew then, I said, that's what I've been striving for. And that will be my standard to utilize my gift, talent, skill, or whatever to create true art. Because if I'm going to reveal my soul, as the women were saying who were at the psychic fair, it says art reveals the soul of the artist, then I want them to see the best my soul can offer. And when I came to San Francisco and read that in this very deep book I was reading at the time, that true art reveals the nature, character, and personality of God within, it made sense. Very profound. So when you ask about my process, my process is to sit down and approach the canvas, the paper, or whatever I'm doing from a prayer to say, okay, source, God, whatever you want to call it, let's create art to lift them up to lift mm. up your children and light them up. Wow. Thank you. And does it just start to come out after that? I mean, is there something that just hits you? Is there a force that, fe you, does it feel like a force or is it quiet? What just kind of starts you on you that know, It's a faith movement. walk. It's like life. It's a faith walk because when I start, I'm not guaranteed it's just going to be beautiful. When I sit down, it just doesn't come out as just beauty. It comes out sometimes looking like an absolute mess. But halfway through it, I said, this is never going to work. And then I said, wrong thought, wrong thought. Keep your faith intact and keep moving through. Keep moving through it until a certain point comes when I get a spark, a glimmer of what's, you know, about to be born. And so I'm excited now because I can see the top of the mountain. I can see the finish line, the goal. And once it gets to a certain point, I said, ah, I'm home now it's just all just putting a few sparkles here and some light here and just dancing and that's when I'm in the zone I'm in a zone whereas I've let go of earth and I'm just sort of dancing in the light creating these pieces yeah this is the true uh, description of being a divine host you know this is how this is what it is Mark this is the evidence of that because you cannot produce this kind of uh, miracles in details like this without being a, a complete respect to that flow. Because when he completely step aside, allow look at this the detail of his work here. It, right. it, it just it just these things you cannot see this if your ego is in the way. You know, it's really interesting because this is I'm talking about dying completely, and. Surrender, allowing absolutely yeah so it's this a is surrendering this is process. the essence of physical death yes. you know in a sense of 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 really allowing something great to come true i, I very much agree with yeah. you because it is kind of a death of the ego mm -hmm. whereas you know when it's not working and i'm afraid and things are just look like they just go abstract and every time it doesn't work every time because there are other things that can block you mm -hmm. and i'm saying that that piece just didn't work for me at all but I realized that you must keep moving towards that sort of ascension of consciousness <laughs> so that you can reach that vibration. <laughs> now, sometimes that vibration changes like, okay, you don't get to one level and just get to hang out for 50 years. It might have worked one year and you have to go higher to continue to produce what is coming next. So it always challenges me. It is a force that cuts my diamond it shapes and cuts the fastest mm -hmm. on my inner diamond so that i can then use this to serve humanity mm -hmm.